Okay, so I was going through my streaming notes and I realized that I forgot to do, um, there was a question that said, uh, can you create a tutorial about creating planets like Moon or Mars in ZBrush? Um, and can you use real photos or height maps from NASA? You can, I don't have any height maps from NASA available uh, that I, I just saw this thing. So uh, I haven't downloaded any height maps, but if you did have a height map, all you would need to do is like say drag out a sphere 3d and then go over here to your well go ahead and make a poly mesh 3d then go to your surface here and um, turn on surface noise and then this alpha on and off go ahead and load up your height map in here let's see if you have any i guess we do have one in there any um any alpha you want to load up there hey everybody thanks for <laughs> showing up and uh i'm just going over um there was a question on my YouTube stream about, you know, if you wanted to make the moon or Mars or a planet, um, like a cratery asteroidy planet, um, how you could go about doing that. And one of those would be surface noise. If you did have a height map from NASA, I don't have a height map from NASA, unfortunately, but um, we'll go ahead and crank that strength up and then turn down basic noise. So basically you would just load your alpha using this button right here. And that would load up your height map as a displacement map. Uh, once we have that, the way, and of course this isn't, this is based on our UV, this is based on 3D, we've got our alpha scale here if we wanted to tile this a bunch of different times. Um, but if you're loading up a height map that would go 0 to 1 and then wrap itself around, if you have a cylindrical mapping of it, you could do that. Uh, you could hit OK, and then once you're ready to apply that to your mesh, of course you'd want to, you know, well, you'd want, first, enough, first of all you'd want to make sure you're, this thing is subdivided up enough. So if I subdivide this up to like 2 million, Go ahead and store a layer and go ahead and store probably a morph target to play it safe. And then you could go ahead and go back to you. So right now, this is just surface noise. So it's just a displacement. So I can do anything to this. Like I can go in here and I can move this stuff around and it's just gonna kind of swim that displacement map uh, over the model. However, uh, I can go over here to apply to mesh and that I'll go ahead and apply that to my mesh. And of course, since I saved a layer uh, before I did that, I can go through here and I can just dial that down or dial it over crank it if I want to, or I can do the opposite and over, you know, flip it around if I want. And then once I have that, I can hit bake all. And then I can go in here with my morph brush. Whoops. My, uh, my tablet isn't plugged in. Where are you at? There he is. Sorry about that. There we go. Um, so uh, once I have that over there, I could use my morph brush. So BMO, and we could just morph this out if I want to, or I can do switch, and then I can morph in uh, where I would want my stuff. So just a little bit more control. That's assuming you have a height map you can bring in. Uh, if you wanted to also, I have these brushes here. Let me get the uh, Z brush. Hold on, let me go to Twitter here. I always forget where these things are. I just need to add a link. Let's see, messages here. There we go. And resources. Oh, all right there. So from ZBrush Guides, um, I got these rock brushes, so if we go and load those up, basically, uh, if you download those rock brushes, uh, if I go to my file explorer here, and we'll just go to ZBrush 4R7, so Program Files, Pixelogic, ZBrush 4R7, and ZBrushes in here, I just have a bunch of rock brushes in there. And uh, since I have it in that location, I can just hit the comma key here. And we'll go ahead and go to our brushes here, and we'll hit the four, and we'll go to our QR rock, rock brushes, there we go. And then we got detailing brushes here, and rock placement, rock details, let's go up one. I haven't had a whole lot of time to mess around with these, but I almost guarantee there's some crater, yeah, so here's like a crater rock, noise rock, we'll try crater rock and see how that works here. Make a really big brush size here. There's a really a lot of cool, um, and it kind of trims it down here. Let's load up another one. So I hit the comma key here, 
rock cracks, stylized rocks, chisel rocks, structural brushes. So uh, rock layering, all sorts of rock in here. So I would probably just go through here and do a lot of um, just kind of playing around with these rocks and these alphas. And you know, see this one, you can just kind of drag out and start creating cracks. Um, obviously, uh, that's going to give you more of a cliff rock look. If you wanted to do just a crater, let me look up a crater real quick. We'll make our own brush real quick. Uh, uh, moon crater, we'll say. So we'll make a moon crater and we'll apply it as a, as a drag rect and also as kind of a spray. Um, Let's see. Yeah, they're super useful. And I, I don't do a whole lot of rock sculpting. I mean, I did a rock sculpting thing where I just went through and did, did some organic, natural, kind of rocky stuff. Um, but this just reminded me, going back through my streaming notes, that uh, there was some stuff I needed to go over. So let's make a crater real quick. So I'm going to go over here to my plane 3D, drag that out, go into edit mode, make it a poly mesh 3D here. And again, we're going to need to subdivide this thing up. If you don't want your corners to average as you're subdividing, just turn off the smooth modifier under geometry and just divide this thing up to give you, I don't know, up to a million, I suppose. Now on this one, since it's going to be round, I'm going to take my transform, go to activate symmetry across the, uh, let's see, Y, nope, Z. So activate symmetry across the Z and now you can kind of sculpt in a circle. And we can go through here. If you crank up your radial count, you can just really quickly kind of go through here and start building up maybe the ridge, the edge of a crater here. You can use your standard brush and kind of start building that up. Hold down shift. I'm going to just change over to smooth stronger. And uh, if you need to, you can also step down through your subdivisions here. You can, if you hit control D, that'll, that'll add subdivisions. And then uh, let's keep stepping down here. There we go. So we're just kind of get this crater blocked in here. And now obviously craters aren't going to be perfectly round, but that's okay. We can fix that in a second and also make sure we don't have dynamic turned on. There we go. Um, so we can kind of carve this out like so. We can kind of push this down if we want to. Now, because if I go to the side here, we're going up and down, we're probably going to have, a, have to worry about a mid value, which isn't a big deal, but that'll just be kind of a thing we tune with our alpha map to kind of get this to look right. So we've got our crater here. Now, if I wanted to, I could go here with H polish and I could H polish either one of these sides if I want to kind of tighten this up a little bit, uh, which it looks like on the moon craters, you can kind of tell the ones that are really new. They just look like perfect little cups taken out of the dirt. And then the older ones look like their edges are starting to crum get crumbly and stuff like that. So we could kind of start with this shape and then we can go in here with maybe trim dynamic and kind of trim down some of this stuff. I'm going to change my radial count down Actually, you know what? Let's just activate X and Y symmetry. So we did radial symmetry to get our circle-ish, and now we can do X and Y symmetry. And I'm just gonna kind of step through the symmetry here. There we go. So we can kind of start sculpting like this now. And again, this isn't, if, if it's a organic natural object, obviously you're not gonna have a ton of symmetry. So, you know, use the sparingly. I'm trying to see if there's any time-saving stuff I can do as I'm working on this crater. Um, and if I want to change that, uh, the kind of the, the contrast between my highs, and my lows, I can go over here with my transpose and just hit shift and I can, you know, anchor it to that mid plane. And then if I hold down shift and then just pull, I can just increase and decrease, uh, based on that midline here. So I can just kind of rock that up or push this down. If I push it all the way down, it'll just make it a completely flat plane again. Uh, but if I pull that away, that'll kind of increase that distance there. And we'll go ahead and smooth this out. And if I'm going to do a secondary pass, like if I'm going to be dropping this crater all over the place and then do another secondary pass where I manually go in and kind of break that crater up and then manually go in and add some surface noise, um, I could do that. So I wouldn't want to put a whole lot of detail in here, but if you did want to do a bunch of very specific craters, you could go in here. Let's go in here with our move brush, uh, not our morph brush. So, oh good. I have to reset up all my hotkeys again here. Uh, so I'm going to go into my, I'm, I'm do, doing some back and forth stuff, so I might have to reset up some stuff. So if I go into my uh, brushes here, I hold down control alt, and I'm going to do alt W for move. Okay, it's set. 
Oh, w, there we go. And we can just go into our move brush here. Now, if I use my move brush with radial symmetry, it's going to be uh, all of them working at once. I'm going to deactivate symmetry by hitting X. And then I can go through here and just kind of bust up this crater just a little bit. And if I want to pull to a point, again, I bring this up all the time. We can go to our brush settings here because some of these look like they do kind of pull to irregular points. So I'm going to go to my depth, I'm sorry, my curve, and then uh, hit Accu Curve. And that'll go ahead and like pull to a little bit of a sharper transition as opposed to a kind of a wobbly circle here. And then what else we got? Uh, we kind of have some trim stuff going on. And we also looks like we have some layer brush stuff going on. Um, and I'm going to be, let me get through this here. I'll, I'll look through the, let's see. Bu 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 bum. Thanks everybody. Thanks for showing up. I'm going to drop some of these down here. And da, 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 da. Oh, cool. I'm glad the, uh, I need to go through this here. Hey everybody. Thanks for showing up. Uh, I will get to the, uh, so the question is if projectiles bring up artifacts and projection, go about fixing it. Um, there's, there's ways to do that. I'll get to that in just a second. We might actually do it on the, on the planet too, if we wanted to like remesh this for some reason. Um, but yeah, we can definitely go over that. So again, I'm going to go into my move brush here. And if I pull this down to corners and what else we got going on craters, if we go over here to like our trim brush, let's go ahead and do our trim brush with a, and I'm going to do a square alpha for everything because once you put a square alpha on there, it gets very, very rock like. Uh, same thing with my H polish. I can go in here with a square brush. Same thing if I go to my comma key brush, Elemental Pew QRS trim, and grab our trusty trim smooth border with square alpha. And now we can kind of use this to kind of go through and just kind of ding, ding up our. Um, or rock a little bit, as well as those rocks I sent from uh, zbrushguides.com. If I go in here to my brushes, and actually we'll grab the mallet brush as well. That's another good one. We'll do mallet fast too. And then I need to go back through, I keep saying this, I need to go back through these brushes. Um, and let's see, rock brushes here. And detailing, let's look at our detailing brushes here. Uh, rock cracks, rock placement, sharp little rocks, rock stylized, carver, Simple, strong, directional. Let's see, moon craters. Okay, here we go. So here's a moon craters brush that they have uh, on the ZBrush guides. And if we just go back to our sphere here. There we go. We got the moon craters starting to come up. So what that's doing is applying a surface. It looks like it's got some surface noise. built. Uh, maybe not. Looks like it kind of had some surface noise built into the brush here. But you can kind of just move this around and start getting uh, some craters kind of built up. So this is a brush we're kind of recreating uh, as we go through and we do ours. So that'll be interesting. So if we go back to our crater here, uh, again, let's bring up our mallet brush here, mallet fast, and you can kind of use this to kind of bust down some layers. This one already has a square alpha built in. You can always change the intensity if you want to kind of uh, change that a little bit. And then instead of going into smooth, which is just going to make everything really soft again, I'm going to go into my H polish with my square brush. And that'll kind of allow me to smooth, but also kind of keep things a little bit crusty. So you can kind of just go through here and start just dialing this in. And it'll smooth a little bit, so it does get a little goopy in there. Same thing with trim dynamic. It's not going to be uh, super rocky like trim smooth border. Um, but I am going to, so the bottom of this bowl, it looks like on the moon, I'm going to have to go in here with H polish and hold down alt and just kind of pull this stuff up to a flat surface in here. Uh, I can also go through here and mask this and then just hit that surface normal and we'll go from the bottom here and I'm going to anchor it about here. Then we hold down shift. That's going to pull everything down to that flat spot there. So it looks like on the moon craters it hits and then it kind of fills back in uh, with that kind of stuff. It kind of looks more like that. And then we can go in here with trim dynamic and kind of start holding, we can hold down alt. We can kind of just fix that transition a little bit. And uh, of course you don't have to spend this much time on a crater. Uh, it also looks like if we go into our clay brush here, I'm going to do a, da, 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 da. we're going to clone this brush off. We're going to go to drag dot. We're going to go to just a simple alpha 06. And now I can just use this with various Z intensities. And I can kind of just start either 
putting little crater pox on here. I can also, if I really crank that up, uh, clay brush isn't going to deform the mesh that much. If I want to do it more, I might be inclined to go to my standard brush here, clone that off. Again, go to drag dot, throw in that circle brush alpha, and that'll give me a little more leeway. Go ahead and hit L to turn off lazy radius and change our focal shift down to a negative 100. And now we can really crank that up. And that'll really kind of put some of these dots in here. Now, if I wanted to kind of randomize this a little bit more, I could go to like a spray stroke. Whoa. And let's go to our stroke options here. Placement, flow. I'm going to turn my flow way down. There we go. I'll make our brush size smaller. And we'll do, see, there's a scatter here. Scale, scale that down and crank that placement up. And again, obviously, you can see I don't play with these <laughs> settings very much either. Uh, let's see, placement down, placement up. There we go. I kind of scatters them a little bit more. So you can go through here and you can kind of start peppering in these things too. And again, we'll go in back in with our H polish brush here. And then kind of start softening these things out. Now, if Smooth Stronger is smoothing it way too much, you can hold down Shift and just drop that Z intensity down. And we can just kind of wear these edges just a tiny bit. And then again, go into our H polish here. All that good stuff. So let's say we have a crater we can kind of use. So to capture this, a couple different ways we can do it. If we want to do it a very clean way, we can go to document here, turn off proportional. We'll make it 1024, hit tab 1024. Hit resize. Yes, control N and we'll zoom out. And now uh, we can just grab our mesh here. Now because uh, we didn't, when we did our subdiv uh, our smooth modifier was turned off when we subdivided. We still have nice sharp corners here. Um, so we can go over here and just hit frame or you can hit F. Now to go ahead and frame your mesh up and then you can go to alpha, the alpha menu here and you just go grab doc. And that'll grab your entire document. You've got your crater alpha here that you can now put into a brush. Now, uh, if you wanted to, I mean, that'll get you, you know, it's now it's a 1024 by 1024, 16-bit uh, grayscale. You're good to go. Um, if I hit control N, go out of edit mode, hit control N, and then we go back to document and we'll do um, turn off, uh, I'm sorry, turn on W size, hit new document, and then don't save changes. So that way W size just fills up your available space right here. If you wanted to do a little quicker version, but not as controlled, you can just drag this out, go into edit mode, out of edit mode to drop it to your canvas. Go into your big orange S here and choose MRGBZ grabber. And then you can just drag out this, which is going to grab your material, RGB, and depth, Z grab. And then you can hold on shift too if you want to constrain it to a square, which it's not doing very well. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Drag this out. Make it as big as you can on your canvas here. And then drop it to your canvas here. And then grab your MRGBZ grabber. There we go. Now it's constrained to a square. You can hold on shift to constrain it to a square. Go ahead and capture that. Again, we don't need this texture it's grabbing, but we do need that height map. So this is our uh, grab dock, and then this is our depth grab from the MRGBZ grabber. So now we can go over here to our sphere. And with this, uh, we have it in our loaded, the alpha load in our H polish brush. We don't need that. So I'm going to turn that alpha off. I'm going to go to my standard brush clone that we just made. So B. S standard one. I'm going to replace this alpha with our uh, crater alpha. And I'm going to change my stroke to drag rect. We're going to play with this a little bit. So first thing is focal shift is to negative 100. It's to get nice crisp lines. We can play with radial fade in that in just a second. Uh, but in order to fix what's happening here, see how it's kind of giving us a border around here? We're going to go to our alpha menu. And we're going to go to modify. Um, I'm looking for a mid value here. So at the mid value of zero, it pops out by default. If we crank this up to mid value of 100, it pops in. So basically, we were looking for where it stops popping out and popping in and gives us something uh, that's kind of hidden. So if I go here to the mid value and type in 50 and drag it out, you're going to see uh, it still pops out a little bit. If I go up to like 63, it pops in a little bit. So it's between 50 and 63. So I'll type in like 55. And that pops in a little bit. We'll go to 52. And that pops out a little bit. 
So 53. Pretty good. So be somewhere between 53 and 54. Now, remember when I said you can turn your focal shift down to negative 100? If you do have a circular alpha, you can actually change that focal shift to be like 41, and that'll start blurring your edges, as well as if you want to keep that at negative 100, go over here to your radial fade and just crank that up a bit. And uh, it should go ahead and fade out your edges as well. So you can kind of do that and kind of get rid of any artifacting. Um, I could have played with the mid value a little bit more and seen if. 53, 54 was what I wanted, uh, but that's good enough. Um, you can go through here with this brush now and change your Z intensity. If you want it to be like less, you know, like barely deforming or crank it up. And you can just go through here and start putting in a bunch of craters on your planet. Um, of course, you could build up an entire library of these things and use them all. And you can also go through here with our spray brush and you can just start spraying uh, craters on your planet here. So just start going through here and kind of spraying. And there's all sorts of stuff you can do as far as if we go to our brush here and we'll do uh, maybe turn on orientation and we can do like spin and you can kind of start plugging some of these things in as you're dragging stuff out or changing your stroke carry. I mean, you can go from drag rect or you can do drag dot and just kind of drag these things out or you can go into your dot stroke and start dragging them in. Of course, you're going to have to play with that and scattering it uh, a little bit more. And also probably under your stroke menu here, if we turn on our lazy mouse, you can start dragging them out like that. And then we can crank up our lazy step to kind of space them a little bit more. And then you could turn on, uh, you could maybe even turn on a roll if you wanted to, although that's probably not going to work very well. You'd have to set that up at like lazy step of one, I think. Eh, maybe not. Let's see. Also, yeah. Stroke, and turn off roll. So yeah, you can, whatever you want to do. Um, also, a, a t on top of this, what you could do is supplement this with your surface noise, whether it be a height map that you went and brought in or just general surface noise. If I go to a noise scale, I can scale this up. So we can apply this noise to our planet here. That strength looks a little bit much. Let's crank that down just a bit. There we go. And then of course, play with your noise curve here. So if we crank this up and then pull this down, we can start getting some interesting rocky shapes here. Yeah, it looks about right. So I hit OK. And that kind of breaks up our surface here. Um, as well as, uh, what else can we do? What else can we do? If you don't want that noise to show up for any reason, you can hold that control and you can just mask it out. And if that mask is bugging you, you can go over here to your masking and you turn off view mask and that'll just kind of allow you to mask um, and then also kind of hide it. So you can go through here and mask the stuff out and then turn that off. And then that you can do that before you apply your surface noise or you can do er like we did earlier and save a layer, bake it all, use your morph target, brush it out later. It's kind of up to you. Um, thanks for showing up, everybody. Going back through here. Let me go back to my streaming topics here. Cool, cool. Um, let's see. If you get bored, when to use the extract and when to use panel loops. Um, you can um, panel loops. Extract is a little less function, not functional. Uh, Panel loops will give you a little bit more options as far as just like taking the surface of your object and extracting it, which is just going to give you a basic extrusion, as opposed to panel loops, which will give you a uh, basic extrusion if you wanted to dial back all the settings, as well as giving you the options to kind of create borders and stuff. So very similar, but we can kind of go over some of that stuff too. Let's see. Cool. Um, this will be... Um, uploaded to my channel eventually. I think by default, YouTube will just throw this entire stream on there because I'm restreaming to YouTube. Um, but I'll also do highlights on my Twitch channel, which I'll then send over to YouTube just to make it a little bit more organized. Cool. Um, yeah. Uh, would I recommend a 1440p for screen for ZBrush? That's a good question. I think it scales fine. Mm. I haven't actually used one because I use my portable laptop, which is only um, 1080p, so 1920 by 1080. Uh, uh, well, I'll at work, I have a screen. 
I'm trying to think how big it is. It seems to be a little, it's a little higher resolution than this one. It might be 1920 by like 1260 or something like that. So it's slightly longer than it is wide and it works fine in there. Um, I haven't tested it, but it should be fine. More real estate. That's a good question though, if the menus would be too small. Um, yeah, and as far as like armor pieces and stuff, we did, if you go to, and we could do some of this stuff today too, just, I, I like to do things on my channel just because I can organize it with highlight clips. Um, if you go to here, speaking of armor, we did a big ornamentation thing last week here. Hold on, let me go to new messages. So if you go here, that's my uh, Pixel Logic um, Twitch TV workshop. And then on this one here, if you go to this playlist here, if you go to Twitch TV, um, you'll see all the backups of the stuff I do on my channel, which is what I'm doing now. Uh, but we did a bunch of ornamentation for armor and stuff. So yeah, we go over a bunch of armor uh, stuff further back, uh, kind of concepting armor out. And then as we move, and actually on my channel, you're going to see a ton of stuff on there if you want to kind of go through. And there's some armor stuff on there. Um, let's see. Is it possible just to throw a moon alpha around a sphere to get the same effect? Um, yes. So yeah, if you do have height information, you would be able to just apply that as, uh, like we were talking about with our surface noise, you could bring that in um, and go ahead and just apply that. And then, where is that? Where are you at? Where are you at? Oh, you could also go apply it, apply it as a displacement map. So yeah, you could throw it into your surface noise here at the alpha or, let's see, cancel. You could also just go into your displacement map here and just select, you know, import it, select your displacement map, and then um, it'll go through. And then you can apply your displacement map as a uh, deformable geometry if you'd like. And you could just do that. Um, oh, good to know. So you can change your button size and preferences for higher resolution screens. Perfect. Um, the space bar menu, I'm not sure if you can customize that. I haven't tried. I, I usually use just S for draw size and this stuff I probably should use more, but I never do. Um, but I use my custom menu here a lot, which is basically uh, just going through here, creating a custom menu, then assigning a hotkey to that. So I have everything I need. So I would just, me personally, I would probably just end up just setting up my own custom menu if I couldn't um, go through here. This one just assigned to Alt A. Uh, if you want, you can also go to the intro to ZBrush part two on my channel here, and that'll walk you through uh, custom interface, custom hotkeys, all that good stuff. Um, what if you wanted to apply surface noise to the moon instead? How would you retopo that though? It would most likely be in the millions. Everything with surface noise is. I was wondering if there's an efficient way to retopo that, even if you have hard surface panels. Uh, zero mesh or DynaMesh instead of Decimation Master. Um, yeah, and I mean, you could zero mesh this thing and have it follow, you would probably want to turn up your adaptive size a bit just because um, when you go in here and you go to zero mesh and you have your adaptive size, you change that to zero, it's going to keep everything nice and uh, perfectly sized, uh, well, similarly sized uh, squares and it'll also keep your uh, target polygon count pretty close to what you want. However, um, you're, it's probably going to you know, when it get when it hits this kind of problem right here, instead of going through here and creating an edge around here and creating smaller edges to maintain your detail, it'll just go through and just blanket it with quads basically, which is fine in some instances. Uh, but in other instances, if you did want it to pick up that surface detail, you would have to go through here and change your adaptive size up. So it picked up these undulations, but then now you're introducing uh, not even quad topology, which isn't that huge of a deal, but it is going to increase your poly count a bit to kind of build in all of these crater ridges. So, yeah, and uh, as, and I mean, when it comes to organic stuff that's not going to animate, I would be inclined just to decimate it down and do a little bit of cleanup as opposed to going through here and doing like perfect animatable quad topology that is going to take you a long time but it doesn't really matter because it's not going to be, I mean, you're going to get some normal errors, I suppose, but 
when it comes to this kind of stuff, it would be like, I don't know, just bake it out to a sphere. And it's, if it's going to be hanging out over here, uh, you're fine. If you're going to be walking on it, that's more of a terrain problem. So in that case, yeah, maybe decimating triangles isn't going to work depending on the kind of terrain and if how your engine handles terrain, what kind of topology you would need. So that's kind of a, a little bit, it could be a little bit weird. 